What's up chess gamers and chess players? Today we are looking at the traps and lines of the King's Indian defense. It's opening, you could play it against everything. Let's start with e4. This is the most popular first move. We're gonna go d6 because if we put our knight here on f6, you will perish with a pawn move e5, a move that I recommend in the first sight. If you see e4, go pawn to d6. If they go something like Pawn to d4, that's fine. We are gonna go knight to f6. But what if this happens? Because we are gonna take, they will take back, look what happens. We will take their queen on d1, and so if they take back, they cannot castle no more. We will go here. A very venomous fork is upcoming on white, and, and after that move, we're just gonna take the pawn on e5. Nice and simple, and we're winning in the game. What if the second most popular move happens? We are gonna go knight to f6 first, since the e4 pawn is not here yet. And so after that, the most common response is to go pawn c4, not actually e4 because that blunders the pawn. And so if they do this, we are gonna go pawn g6. Why? Because we are gonna develop our bishop there. They will most likely go knight to c3 after that move, and we're gonna go to g7. And as you can see, it is a very very good diagonal for the bishop to go there. Most likely e4 will come. They are gonna try to attack you. We are gonna go pawn to d6 like earlier, so that we can do the same thing. Like for example, if they go here again, we just take, they take, that's a blunder yet again. We get the same position as a while ago, this fork and this fork over here. So the opponent will not do that. They would most likely go knight to f3. The most popular move according in this position. We are gonna go castle patiently in the side of the board. In this position, folks, we are gonna go attack on the center with pawn to e5. Challenging the pawn on d4. What will happen is that if they take the pawn on e5 first, we will take back. And if they take back, there is a nasty trap behind all of this. White had a mistake of going knight to e5. Why? Because we're gonna take the queen on d1. And if they take back with the bishop on d1, for example, we are gonna take the pawn on e4. So if they take back our knight on e4, we will have a very powerful bishop and a very open position. Black's position is much better now than a while ago. Because now, white's plan is sort of killed because of the fact that they have almost all of their pieces on the back rank. While us have so many open pieces to play with. And also, we can attack the king right ahead and right away. Maybe they will push. A lot of people do. We're gonna go a5. Why are we gonna go a5 with this opening? Because a lot of times, your opponent will and try to demolish you with the pawns on this side of the board. And so we're gonna go play a5 to counteract that. And so what will happen is they will castle. We will go develop our knight on b8 to here. Why? Because we are just trying to fight for this side of the board. Because this will be turning aggressive soon. If they go here, bishop to g5, starting off with a pin on the queen, we will go and attack the bishop on g5 first. With a pawn on h6. And so the bishop will go back on h4. We will go queen to e8 unpin ourselves first and most likely the game will go a3 what will happen is that if we don't move this bishop here we if we go here instead this is a mistake because if they go here we will take they will take and we will take back but our rook is plundered so we will not do that instead what we're gonna do is go here bishop to d7 and now as you can see if we do the same procedure if we take the pawn this rook is protected by the queen now and we are taking the file over here so which is a very good benefit to go bishop to g d7 already in this position in this position most likely white will go here when we go bishop here trying to reinforce this they go here and attack this side of the board we go here and attack this side of the board and so folks what will happen is we will go knight to h7 they will go pawn to b4 striking first in their own side of the board we will take they will take back and now for some reason, we're gonna ignore the side for a second because after that, we are gonna go pawn to f5, trying to strike back in the center. This is how fun the king's Indian can be. We are gonna strike back in this side of the board, trying to target the king early on. They will most likely go back with a knight and try to attack this side of the position quickly as possible on the queen side. We're gonna go pawn to f4 and we already have a pawn wedge over here that can suffocate white right away in this position. If they go pawn to f3, trying not to be trapped with the bishop on h4 if we go pawn to g5, still gonna do this. And so if they go back escaping from the threat of the pawn on g5, look at this. We are having so much power over all of these pawns that we are just winning in this position. And a lot of times you will win this. So folks, now you know all of the concept in this line 
of the king's indian defense going back in this line folks there's another line they might just castle we will take the pawn on d4 and what happens in this line is that if they take we will actually go rook e8 and try to attack this pawn on a4 so if they go pawn to f3 we will go knight to c6 attack the knight on d4 if they go and do nothing we're gonna take the knight on d4 they will take back this is a discovered attack and so folks you cannot take this because this is protected and a queen for a knight is not good so they have to not do nothing and instead try to protect their own knight on d4 we will go knight to h5 they will go queen to d2 and we are gonna go and take the knight on d4 they may take back we will go knight to f4 in this position they see this as a mistake because if they take our bishop we'll take back they will get a free knight but that is nothing because we will go for the insane move queen to g5 that protects the knight on f4 it threatens checkmate a lot of your opponents might go here but what they don't realize is that the fact that it's not only checkmate that we're threatening we're threatening a discovered attack of the queen on d2 and so they have to move the king over here and the crazy thing about this position is that the fact that they can defend it but with only the correct moves possible which is hard to find king to f2 over here so in this position folks if we go and check him over here they will try to protect their own queen but folks what are we gonna do first is take the bishop on g7 and now the material is balanced but as you can see white is still losing because after queen to c5 attacking the king they have to go here and after that we can even still check the king on e1 with knight to g2 on the board checking the king and so after that we will we can even fork the king and the rook on f1 which is crazy so there's no doubt you can try this they have to move the king and we will take the rook and we get plus two points and there might be sometimes bishop to g5 trying to pin your knight to the pawn on e7 so folks what are we gonna do here is go pawn to c5 they might take and if they take we will go here queen to a5 is weapon not only pinning the knight is is that the fact that if they take this this is a free bishop so folks what will white do here is try to go bishop to d2 if they go try to protect the pawn on c5 we will go and actually take this pawn with the knight on e4 because this knight is pinned to the king and so this is being attacked twice also with a bishop here and it's a very very hard position to play for white and so they have to go here and we'll take the free pawn which is a great advantage for us so folks let's move on to f3 this f3 move is strengthening the center of white's position so it's a very reasonable move but we are gonna castle and after that they might go bishop to e3 we are gonna go pawn to c6 starting an attack and if they go queen to d2 developing their own queen trying to castle queen side we will go pawn to d5 striking in the center right away if they go pawn to e5 attacking our knight which most people will do we will go knight to d7 and so a lot of people go here and take the pawn on d5 we will take back they will take back with the knight on d5 we will go knight to d6 attacking both pawns over here if they develop some piece like the bishop most likely they will we will attack their bishop on c4 the bishop must go away but as you can see if the bishop tries to go away well folks we are actually just gonna try to take this pawn why because if they take the knight we will get a very very good position and more advantage for black but folks what if they don't do that they're kind of impossible not to do that because if they go here anyway we are gonna go and take this and the same thing happens so folks what they might do is not do that but play h4 we're just gonna go b6 they will go knight to c3 trying to go back with the knight trying to go away from the threat of the queen we're gonna go try to to go for an attack with pawn to f6 and if they take we will have this very powerful rook over here as you can see the position in the position black is dominating right now and we have a very very active rook in the center of the board their but their pieces are on the back rank of the board our rook is already open so we can pin the bishop even it's just sort of four pawns in one line which is crazy we will go pawn to c5 and attack the center this way so if they take queen to a5 again and so that will try to attack the pawn on c5 and also try to pin the knight on c3 if they take the pawn on d6 this time we will take the pawn on e4 and what will happen if they take back again we will go and take the knight on c3 they will take back 
they might have to take. But if that happens, we will take back with a queen. That attacks the rook and the king. But we cannot take the rook because after the move bishop to d2, they might defend it with the queen. And so after that, we will go here. Queen to d4. Trying to pin the bishop to the queen. Not only that, threatening this mate. Is maybe try to defend it with knight. But there is something mistaken about that. If we take the knight, there's no one stopping this. Correct move in this move is to go king to e2 so that if we go here they might go here and we are winning in this position and so after that move we're just winning in the position we have clearly clearly demolished white's territory and we're gonna try to cast on the next move when we take this pawn after the move here and overtake and also taking the pawn with a knight on e7 so folks this is pure advantage over here we got plus four points according to the computer so we have discovered Knight here, which is the most popular move. We have discovered this move here, which leads to a mistake. And we have discovered also this move, which tries to strengthen the center. But we have learned to counterattack about that. And so there is another move here, which is this aggressive light. But we have already analyzed that. But you can go deep theory in this because it is a bit scary to play with this. I would recommend other vi chess videos after this video. But folks, if you want a deep theory about this, comment down below if you want more videos about the Kings Indian, more deep theory. And I think that's it. See you guys in the next video. I've discovered almost all the lines of the Kings Indian. What could possibly happen? You guys fill the lines up with other chess videos. Thank you for watching, everyone. You guys are epic. And yeah, we're going to hit 1K. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.